It's like GPS for your life. The Sky Vibe Show. Are you mooning me? (laughs) I'm sorry. I had to start that way. (laughs) It's Judy Diamond along with professional astrologer Thomas Miller. (laughs) Only you, Judy. (laughs) Oh, moon, blue moon. Everybody talks about the sun sign, the rising. Poor little moon. It's got to have more meaning than than a lot of people think. Oh, it's huge. You know, think about it. Except for about three days out of the month, we look up at the moon every night up in the sky in some kind of configuration or another, don't we? And it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. The moon governs. We're affected when it's a full moon. We know that. You bet. You bet. What about the tides? Oh, yeah. You don't have to worry about that where you are, but the tides are all controlled by the moon every six hours, you know, basically. So the moon has a tremendous other than gravitational force on our life. It absolutely does. So as astrology in your chart, I know my sun signs, Leo, for example, whatever your sun is, and on TikTok, all they're talking about is sun and and rising, Scorpio. But when you get to the moon, I understood it to mean that it's more your spiritual side, your moon. But am I right? Am I wrong? Well, there's a book that I narrated as an audio book. So I'm an audio book narrator. And And a very good one at that. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. (laughs) Stephen Forrest is the author. He's one of the prominent astrologers on the planet today. And I just feel so honored to have done five, six books, six books for Steve now. And the Book of the Moon happens to be the latest one. Now, that's not why we're doing this podcast. But I just to mention, this is so fresh with me right now. And on my fun. No, we're doing it because I asked you about it. Yeah, you wanted to know. On my, <laughs> I want to know. Well, on my fun astrology podcast, which we've cross talked about on here quite a bit, I have an interview that is posted on early May. Just look, early May 2024 with Steve on the Book of the Moon. And I interviewed him for 30 minutes. And it's a great interview. So that you should listen to that for sure if you're interested okay. in this. And the book is an absolute classic treasure of information on the moon. So he talks about a lot of astronomical and astrological facts and data about the moon in the first several chapters. For example, let me give you a little technique. Have you ever heard of something called the void of course moon? I've heard you talk about it. I never understood what it meant on your show. Okay. So the moon change moon's the fastest moving item on the astrology chart. It changes signs or pieces of pie every about two to two and a half days in its 27.3 day orbit around the earth, (laughs) just to be precise. So it changes signs every about two, two and a half days. Depends on. So if you don't like one, just wait a couple of times, like the weather. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, a lot of people follow that because they know that an Aries moon for those couple of days gets stuff moving. Hammer it out. Mm-hmm. Push stuff forward. Taurus, grounding. Time to get more stable. Like, hold mm-hmm. back. Don't push forward so much. Gemini, multiple projects. That's Those are your multitasking days right there. And you can literally draw energy from the field, if you will, into the wherever the moon is at that given time. Well, when the moon this is fascinating to when me. the moon leaves a sign, so let's say it's getting ready to leave Gemini, and now the next sign it's going to go into is Cancer. Mm-hmm. Somewhere there, at the last part of Gemini, there are no other planets that it will form some kind of a an angle, a geometric angle to another planet. We call it aspects. So then it's just moving through Gemini with no other planets influencing it. It's not kissing anybody else on the way out the door, so to speak. So does that make it pure Gemini? No, but I'll... (laughs) Oh, my. Okay. The the only way I can think of it to say... It's it's impotent. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was just kidding. That's why they call it a blue moon. Get it's it? well, <laughs> no, <Sorry>. that's not <laughs> why. The moon is impotent after it's kissed its last planet on the way out. It's kind of mm, limp, you know. Oh. It's kind of just there, and it doesn't. So it has have, less power. Yeah, no catalyst. And actually, one thing that Steve really that this is interesting that he points out because a lot of people believe today in manifesting and shifting realities and all this stuff has been big topics these days. Mm -hmm. Well, the moon in kind of the metaphysics of this all 
uses, the energies use other planets to create things. So yes, we can trigger things from the moon, but not unless it has help from Pluto or from Mars to really get something going or love. We want Venus at the table, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But in but just as it's leaving the sign, there's that little period where it needs the little blue pill and it's not going to get it until it gets into the next sign. So in other words, when something is now void of, when the moon is void of course, when it's limp, biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew we then, were going here? <laughs> That's okay. Everybody's a big boy you? and girl. Do what? Is it? Is it good then or no, bad? Or- no, it actually is a dead time. It is, it's like, you you know, like if you've been out at the ocean, the tide goes out and then there's slack tide and then the water so, starts to rise again. So it's during, so, it's like a slack tide. Now all I can think about is, is the blue pill. Okay. Um, Come back, so Judy. Come back. I know. I know. Sorry. My <laughs> head is all over the place. So wait a second. It's during that time that maybe you'd want to meditate, lay down low. Or, oh, yeah. Or- that's very good time for that, for like just personal stuff, getting things done, et cetera. What you don't want to do is get married during that time. Oh. What you do oh, want to do during that time is is mail your taxes. <sighs> Go to the post office during that time. Or if you e-file, click to send e-file. Why? Because you don't want something to happen after that. You want to just Mm. do that activity, and that's it. You don't want any follow-up. That's a perfect time for that. What What about doing something like writing? Let's say you want to write something. Is that a good time time to to, write or no? No, take a break. Take a break. You want that inspiration of after it moves into the next sign. Okay. And how long does this usually last? It can last from literally less than an hour to up Mm -hmm. to 15 or 20 hours. It just totally depends on the sky at at any given time. On Fun Astrology, we talk about this quite a bit because there are other. I never understood it. Well, there are other techniques you can use in addition to that. For example, the last planet that it kisses on the way out the door. So let's say right now a big one is Neptune. If it kisses Neptune on the lips, I mean, if it's a French kiss on the way out, Mm -hmm. then you want to take advantage of that. Neptune represents spirituality. So if there's something spiritual that you wanted to do, like write a spiritual blog article or something reflective or something that is not just facts and figures and uh, without emotion, if it's something that you would like to connect with somebody on an emotional level. That Mm -hmm. would be a really good time to post that blog article is right as the moon was hitting Neptune on its way out. Mm -hmm. If it's a scratchy last, you know, like not even a kiss, kind of just an elbow in the ribs kind of thing. I'll see you in a month kind of deal. (laughs) Then (laughs) I'm bam. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. (laughs) Then then you would not want to put activity into that. Now, let me give you an example. Yeah, because I don't know what the speaking of Neptune All right. Steve put this in the book. This is where I'm drawing from it. The book of the moon. Do you remember Apollo 13, the one that almost got lost in space back in the 1960s? Right. Mm -hmm. That was launched during a void of course moon where the last aspect was a negative aspect to Neptune. Which what would be a negative, like a square, Scorpio? a square, a square oh, aspect, a square. like a so 90 degree. So it's not degree. a sign, it's an actual aspect. It's an angle. Something. Yeah, the okay. angle gotcha. that it was to Neptune at that time. So it was, it was a, a negative aspect to Neptune, and you know what happened. Yeah, they, that was if you, kids, you should look it up or look at video. They weren't lost in space, but they had all kinds of problems with the mission, and they almost were. I mean, they really, literally, if it wasn't for some duct tape and a lot of people keeping their heads together, we would have lost those two astronauts. I wonder if NASA is now looking to uh, charts and, and astrology and astronomy of when to launch things. Unfortunately, I'll bet they didn't get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> you might be surprised. They do. They do talk about full moons on NASA's website, so... They do, but they don't understand it from this configuration. So the moon is very important in our lives, and there is so much in our charts. But I will tell you this, the biggest thing, and when you go all the way to the end of Steve's book, and this is not giving anything away because it is so rich in between, but what you learn at the last chapter, the conclusion, is that if we figure out our moon and we get it right, 
then whenever our time comes and it's time to fly and say goodbye, we'll know that we have achieved our sole purpose. And that really is truly a beautiful thought. Wow. Well, now I want to dive deeper into the, to my own moon here and we'll dive into deeper into all that. And, and actually there's so many questions I have, Thomas, so much, so many, this show could go on forever because we got to break down things like the personality of a Scorpio, because when you talk about Gemini or you talk about Neptune, the planet and, and what it means, these all are really important things to know. Well, they absolutely are, Judy, and this makes so much difference in our lives and people who are living consciously and following this kind of stuff. I mean, just the joy and the radiance you get from people on this amazing journey is worth it all right there. And the Book of the Moon, too, is available on Audible and Apple Books if you'd like to. I would appreciate it if you'd take a look at it. It's a great it's a great listen and as well as a great read. I bought, downloaded the one, The Book of Fire, because I have a fire sign by Steve Forrester, uh, um, narrated by you. It's fantastic. So yeah. this is on my list next. Good. It's a good one. Make sure to follow Thomas Miller's other podcasts, including Fun Astrology and Old Soul, New Soul. And you can also find out about getting your own astrology readings. Thank you for listening.